I've just finished editing up an eight day time lapse. Looking at the footage, I could see that the sensor on my camera was really, really dirty. The final time lapse is live and online by now, and I will pop a link up in the corner. But I've come out to retrieve my camera, and we're going to clean the sensor. So I made the switch to digital in 2002 and I've been cleaning my own sensors since. But for the last 18 years, I've always done wet cleans. I've never done a dry clean. Well, LensPen sent me this Sensor Clear Loop Kit, which is a dry clean system for your sensor. And uh, they asked me to give it a try and see what I think. As I need to clean the D7000, and I've got my other D7000 here that also needs a clean, let's give it a go. So let's open this up, pull out what's inside. We have our destructions here. Designed for sensor cleaning on standard DSLR and four thirds DSLR cameras. Aren't four thirds all mirrorless? Two AAA batteries are included because the loop has a little light in it to help you see your sensor. We got a little blower and we have the lens pen sensor clear two. We also have a couple of fully charged batteries. So we'll stick one of those inside. There, there hasn't been a battery inside this because I've been using it with an AC adapter because the time-lapse went on for like eight days. Let's pull these out and I'm gonna take a shot now. Let's see if I will probably need some supplemental lighting for this. Even on the picture on the back of the LCD, I can see that there's dust on the sensor. So when it's showing up in your actual images without even looking at them full res on the computer, you know it's pretty bad. All right, first of all, we'll take everything out of the box. We'll zoom you back out, actually. That would be a good idea. So it's nice that it comes with a couple of Mitsubishi AAA batteries, because even though we should always have batteries on hand as photographers and filmmakers, we very rarely seem to have them set the camera into mirror lockup mode for cleaning uh, lockup mode for cleaning start and that's it so we'll take the lens off now this let's see so that co oh that cover comes off and then that eyepiece cover does that screw off or pull off it pulls off so this then should fit right in there. I don't think it locks. Place the camera on a clean flat surface, remove the eyepiece cap, slide off the body cover, slide the switch to the on position. The on position, oh look, there's lights. Position the sensor clear loop so it mounts on the camera aperture ring. Well, the camera doesn't have an aperture ring. The aperture ring's on the lens. <laughs> Inspect the sensor. If it is clean, then do not do anything more. It's not clean. We know it's not clean. Um, but let's inspect it. That's actually really quite a good view. Let me see if you can see this with this lens. I don't know if you can. You might have to get... Oh, there we go. You can actually see the dust on the sensor from the Panasonic if it focuses on the right bit. So they've included a rocket blower. This is the next step. Inspect the sensor. If it's clean, then don't do anything more. If it's not clean, then use the hand blower to remove dry dust. So we'll hold it upside down and give it a squirt. This is, this is I mean, it's nice that they include this and it's, it, 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 if it's all you've got, then it's really, really handy. However, I've got the Geotos rocket blower which is much bigger and more substantial and pumps out a lot more air. I mean, you can see the size difference between the two. So this is this is very nice, but it, it, it for me, it, it's a little bit small and... Actually, it does pump out a lot of air. Yeah, th this one definitely pumps out more though. And it's, because it's bigger, it's easier to grab. So I'm gonna use that one and just give it a good spray. And then we'll inspect the sensor again. Um, <laughs> so when I was showing you that then, I didn't realize it was a protective film on the top. So let me grab some tweezers. Where are my tweezers? That's better. 
So now it should be a lot more clear. Even after using both blowers, there, there is still some smuts on the sensor. So what we're gonna do, this is the sensor clear too. So remove the cap and blow on it with the blower, not with your mouth. Preconditions the cleaning tip, increasing its ability to move and pick up sticky dust particles. So presumably this creates some static to help build it up. So if we turn this around, inside this, there's actually a gap down this side. So when it's on your sensor, you can poke the pen through and this is this angles so that you can get down or reach through the hole. So while I'm looking down here, I can dab this on the sensor and pick up all those little dust particles I'm seeing. That's actually pretty cool. Let me straighten that up a little bit. So I know you can't see much, but if I zoom you back in, if you look down there, you can actually see the dust and the, the pan through the loop. So it's interesting having this little bit in the side here. I've noticed I get a certain point over and then the center bits you know, the lens is in the way. So I have to rotate it around and then reposition the camera to attack it from a different angle. I mean, it's a different experience to wet cleaning, very different. Cause with wet cleaning, normally, you know, you, you just put a couple of drops of eclipse fluid on a, a sensor swab or something. And uh, and you just give it a wipe over and you're done. Assuming you didn't put too much fluid on the uh, sensor swab, <laughs> in which case you're probably gonna be waiting for it to dry and doing it again, which is what I ended up doing a lot when I first started cleaning my own sensors like 18 years ago. The one difficulty you have with this, because you're only looking it through it with a single eye is that it's difficult to judge exactly how close you are to the sensor. Right now, I'm just trying to pick off the last few awkward bits and they are really quite awkward. So you can see that the, the end of this thing is quite small, but it's easy to miss and come at it at a slight angle like that. Or like that and you're not entirely sure just looking down this hole whether you're hitting it flat or not so you kind of have to sort of judge your angles and hope for the best so let's pop this on quick <laughs> before it attracts more dust and we'll get another photo So this video has been a lot of shots at the top of my head, I'm sorry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some close-ups so you can actually see through here. For now, I'm gonna blow this off. Pop this lid back on to keep it clean and keep dust out of that bit. Pop this on here, pop the lens back on and we'll get one final shot and I think we're going to be about done. I'll bring these up on the computer and I'll, well, you're looking at it right now. You tell me how it looks. I, I can't see anything just look. Oh yeah. There are a few little bits that I can see on the back of the camera still. They're really teeny tiny. These tiny little bits I'm not seeing on the loop when I look through overall, it's not bad. It's, it's definitely a bit more finicky. It's certainly, it's, it's less, um, it's less physical impact on the lens or on the sensor than wet cleaning. Although I, th I think wet cleaning possibly does a more thorough job. However, I think wet cleaning is probably overkill a lot of the time. Um, I mean, I think 99% of the time 
something like this alone will clean your sensor just fine because usually it's it's very very light bits of dust that just happen to fall in for things that this can't get away there's this and this is sort of fairly non-invasive i mean yes you are still touching your sensor but as long as you take care of the pen and blow it off and don't you know dunk it in mud or something um this is a fairly sort of easy impact way to clean your sensor. I think as a stopgap when this won't work and you either don't have wet cleaning stuff on you or you know it, it, it's it's not bad enough to do wet cleaning or you just want to see if you can avoid wet cleaning this is a fantastic little option. Having this loop whether you're dry cleaning like this or whether you are wet cleaning this loop is amazing. Being able to you know sort of see your entire sensor you know magnified with little leds lighting the whole thing up is awesome this this alone i don't know if you can buy this separately without the pen and all the stuff but if you can just get one of these anyway would i recommend it yeah i probably would actually like i said this is awesome this is pretty inexpensive anyway the pen on its own it's pretty cheap. It's only like 10 or $15 and it's really, really handy. But without this, you're not really gonna be able to, to sort of see the detail you need on your sensor to know whether this has done the job. So I think, you know, buying this on its own is more of a replacement for the original one. If you get the kit and then this is, you know, just past its sell by date, you've still got the loop and you just need a new pen. That's it. It's the Lens Pen Sensor Clear Loop Kit. With the lens pan and the loop and the blower and a little bag to put it all in. So I think in the long term for serious deep clean, I think you're still probably better off with a wet clean. But, you know, for sort of general maintenance, blower, pan, loop. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't think I'll be taking this out with me. I think I'd be worrying that the pan would uh, just attract too much dirt out on location, but I'm not too worried if I'm out shooting and I notice there's dust on my sensor, I'll just, I'll just grab the spare body. <laughs> but I'm, you know, these, I'm only really using these now for a time-lapse. And uh, speaking of time-lapse, that was what brought us here. You might remember a few videos ago, I mentioned Govan Hill Baths in Glasgow. Their restoration was supposed to begin in April and I was supposed to be documenting it all with a lot of time-lapse and videos and other things. That obviously got delayed because of the whole global pandemic thing. Um, but now it's looking like it's hopefully going to be on or starting in the next couple of months. So I've been putting my hardware through its paces to try and figure out what would be best to set up and leave for long term time lapse running several days or weeks or potentially even months. I needed something to test with and I thought, well, seeds. So I got some Cressies, I figured, yeah, everything will work as intended and it'll be over within a couple of days. But no, I ended up having a bunch of problems. I ended up shooting for eight days and I actually got enough shots to put a little video together. Bearing in mind, I, I had no plan for this. I never expected to publish this or show anybody anything, but I've linked it up here in the corner earlier on in the video. Um, but I started a new channel, which I'm linking up in the corner now because I posted it to Facebook and it got some really good feedback and that was when I noticed the sensor was dirty. But I started up a channel because people were like, yay, give us more. So I'm planning to shoot a bunch more, which is why I'm now finally getting around to cleaning the sensors on these things. I do actually have another video on that whole setup, which is really pretty cool, if I do say so myself. But uh, you'll have to wait for that until another video. For now, we're done. If you like this video, and if you like the sensor clear loop, do you do, do any of you use this? Do you, do any of you dry clean your sensors? What do you use to clean your sensors, or do you just take it to the shop and have someone else clean it for you? Let me know down in the comments below. But if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>